Hi everyone. So I'm going to show you a little tutorial about how I transitioned my hair from, I was wearing, well I actually had faux locks in the last time I did a tutorial, and then I went from that to my tried and true trusted backup wig, and I love um, that wig. I actually take that wig apart and do it as a weave a lot of times, but this time with the wind in Tucson. Okay, I love the weather here, but this wind has been just fierce and the wind is not a good combination for um, curly hair in general, but also for, uh, especially for wearing a wig. And um, it also is a little bit hard when all that wind is blowing, even if you have a weave, a sew-in, sometimes it can just blow and um, get the, the wefts showing and nobody wants all that stuff showing. So my solution, hair solution, um, is to do a crochet um, weave, which basically means instead of sewing in tracks, it's, it's a lot more invisible at the root. It can blow in any direction. And this hair is just a little bit long, longer than the weave hair that I have. So it can be pulled back into a ponytail and um, all those things are great for the pool, for the wind, just, um, you know, weather friendly hair. So this is synthetic fiber. I got this on Amazon and it, and when I, when I got it, actually don't be too concerned because <laughs> it looked like such a little amount of hair, like in a little teeny bag, um, two little teeny bags actually. But it just was such a small amount of hair, I was really concerned that maybe it wouldn't be enough. Um, <clears throat> but it was just the packaging, so, that, so don't be worried, it is enough. What I do is I take a strand uh, and I separate this hair into at least half, you can even go into thirds if you want. And then I install um, those in pieces because it just looks a lot more natural than putting in a big full chunk. Now, if you like to, if you if you like this more separated look, you can put it in in chunks like this. The the only thing is, um, you know, it's it's gonna probably be a little more spaced out on your braids, and therefore could possibly um, show you know more of your scalp or more of your braids, and just look a little bit more like a crochet weave as opposed to just hair. So I'm going to separate the hair like this. The next thing I do, and I'm actually here on top, I have braided up and um, latch hooked in the rest. I just kind of got to the top so that I can um, show you what I'm doing up here. So this is, of course, the last little remaining patch of my natural hair. And what I'm doing is I'm going in, it's almost like a C shape pattern like this back and forth um, all the way down so I go um, in a c-shape meaning braid it back and across then the next time braid this back and over so it's almost like a like a little maze or something the reason why I do it that way I'll show you with the end of the braid is partly because of the length of my hair my natural hair it works well for that. The other part is um, just because it alternates the the pattern of the braiding to where it again lays more naturally. So what I'm going to do is first do the straight back, you know, the the vertical part. And I don't necessarily worry too much about getting parts perfect with this because it actually looks even a little bit more. And I'm going to use some. Um, edge control. This is Black Panther Strong Edge Control. But it looks a little more natural if your parts aren't perfect. So don't worry about taking the time to get perfect parts because all that's going to be covered up. And if the wind should blow and the parts aren't perfect, it will look kind of even more natural. You just want them to be in a general direction so your hair doesn't get all twisted up crisscrossing each other. That's the main thing. So put a little bit of edge control on this is the horizontal part this is the more vertical part section see so it kind of makes like an upside down l or something 
I don't know, something like that. I don't know how to think of it, but that's just the braid pattern that I find easy to do for my own hair and even for um, clients' hair. Sometimes I'll do this braid pattern depending on um, the thickness of their hair, their particular goals, and how they want to wear it, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to put a little bit of edge control on this just to get it out of my way and clip it. You always want to make sure that you're not tangling up any of the leave out hair with the other hair. So there you go. I've got this little section left. I'm going to now be braiding up this. So I'm going to take, um, remember I've divided that single piece into half and then I'm going to divide that into half again just for the braiding. Now I actually use this hair to braid as well because it's going to let the roots um, blend even better with the crochet hair. So just take a, a small little section like that to start and you're going to do what I call kind of a messy cornrow, meaning you don't want this to be perfect because, or, or too smooth, because if you do it too smooth, um, essentially it's going to expose your scalp more. So you kind of want to do it a little bit, um, a little bit kind of almost raggedy. Now still keep the tension tight enough to where none of this is going to slip, but you just don't want it to be so slick that, um, again, your scalp is going to be exposed or anything like that. So you're just braiding in this hair <clears throat> right with your natural hair down that braid. And you can do this with relaxed hair. You can do it with straight hair, obviously. Um, that's my texture. You can do it with um, wavy hair. You can do this with 4C hair. You can do it whatever kind of hair you have. In fact, if you do have um, more kinky curly hair, just don't worry about blowing it out and straightening and all that kind of stuff just because it's going to lend itself more to a natural root pattern. When you get to this um, and are you know transitioning to move down the other way, you're just going to kind of like turn that corner with the braid and again continue your somewhat messy braid pattern. Now you do want it to be like a braid, right? Like tight against the scalp, but you want it to kind of have this irregular part structure so that when we get to latch hooking the hair onto it, it's going to just look natural. Like it's essentially growing out of your head. I mean, again, this is hair for weather, wind, getting splashed at the pool, all that good stuff, because that's what's coming up for us here in Tucson. It is late April, um, going into May, so the weather's getting warmer, and I don't know, it's just that wind is just brutal. Now I usually switch my arms when I get to about mid, mid line or so of my head. <laughs> that's the one disadvantage to doing your own hair is getting your arm strength up of having just your hands over top of your head the entire time while you're braiding. So it's a little bit of a workout. That's okay. Don't do it every day. Just do it once in a while if you're doing this because it lasts for quite a while. Sometimes you'll get little fuzzies on the end of that hair that you just kind of you know, discard. Now you can see that I'm going to braid to the end because I'm not using rubber bands. I'm not using thread. I'm just using latch hook um, for in installing not only the hair, but also latch hook to hide the, the ends of my braids. So I've got this little braid. This is your tool. A lot of times they come with a free one in these little packages. I have a million of these little freebies. And you're just going to go ahead and take the end of your braid and pull it through 
the braid, okay? And through like, you know, three or four different spots, then turn it around. This is gonna actually make your braid even a little bit crazier or messier. Don't worry about the fact that, yeah, this hair is ombre and it's getting down to the blonde on the ends, but you're not really gonna see much of that. And then you can just kind of like let that little end exist there. It's gonna hold just fine with no rubber bands or anything. And then we are going to um, take a small hand who needs a popsicle break and I'll be right back. We're back. And I have my rum and coke. It's actually rum and coke zero. <laughs> Fun fact, um, rum has very few carbs in it. Some alcohol is loaded with carbs, but anyways, all that aside, I just needed a drink tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick that latch hook through the braid and hook a piece of that hair. This is that hair that I've divided. And you just wanna pull it through. So I'll show you again. So we're putting the latch hook through, right? Put the middle of the hair, middle onto the latch hook, close the latch, <coughs> excuse me, and pull it through and then pull it through that end. See? So it basically is knotting it around that hair. Now how you're gonna take this out is you're just gonna lift that up, snip it off when you're, you know, of all the rows when you're done um, with this and take it out. So again, divide that into half. I'll show you in the front here. You're just gonna slide your little latch hook right under that braid. Hook the middle, hook the hair, pull it through. You can see that that's, um, these are the two sides. It's so seamless and it looks, I think, you know, super natural at the root level. <clears throat> More natural throughout your head when the wind blows than a sew-in necessarily. But to each their own. This is just my little solution for the moment because I'm tired of standing out at the bus stop and having hair anxiety every time the wind blows really hard and just going like wow this is I'm just standing here looking crazy waiting for lengths to get home on the bus and it just yeah it's just a big headache so now I can have peace of mind just always want to have a, a solution for your hair that fits your life so that your hair does not keep you from living <laughs> most importantly you want to live and do whatever activities that you enjoy, whether it's swimming, biking, gym, hiking, um, sleeping. I don't know what you enjoy or what everybody enjoys, but whatever you enjoy, don't not do it just because of your hair, if that makes sense. Because there is a hair solution for every single activity. And you can, in the comments, if you want to ask like hey you know i have this activity that i like to do what kind of hairstyle do you think would accommodate it because my hair is driving me crazy with this particular activity then yeah by all means i would be happy to shoot off a suggestion so again you're going to just work your way around pick another piece divide it in half these are really nice, easy, short little braids. By the time you get to the top, when you're doing the longer ones around your whole head, it is, yeah, well, it takes a little bit longer to get around the braid, but make sure you close that latch hook before you pull it through. If it falls off, that's no big deal. Stick the, um, the latch hook back through. It's actually easier for me to do this uh, without looking just by feel than it is to actually watch in the mirror because in the mirror it's it's backwards it's a flip image and it and it's kind of confusing for me to look at it and um, have it like 
flipped in my head because sometimes it's like you're moving the latch to the left, but really you're moving it to the right, if that makes sense. So if you get confused by the mirror, you can always just kind of like feel the cornrow. Um, it doesn't matter if you're latch checking it forward or back at the top. You can do it in either direction when you get to these horizontal braids. But yeah, if it's easier for you to just feel it, then do that. Okay, so keep going. I am down to my last pack of this hair. So I feel like it's just enough. Like the bundle, it's enough. It looks like it's not gonna be enough. It is enough, but it's just enough. There isn't a lot of extra. So after you get done with one section there, that's your little section, your braid, you're gonna take that, I actually have a, a hair tie back here that I have the rest of this hair tied up in. See, because I have all of that hair in there, right? So you're gonna then just kind of smooth that back and tie it all into a ponytail while you work on the next row and keep going. We're getting close to the top. I mean, close to being done. Langston's having a crisis, so I'll be back. Okay, so I will do one more little bit here for you, and then I'm going to. Well, I might just go ahead and finish it, you know, as long as we're doing this. It's not that far to go. So again, you're gonna do your vertical part, what I'm calling a vertical part, and then you're gonna do your horizontal part. So that is your vertical piece. Then you're gonna do this. And your little square remaining just gets smaller and smaller. You're going to go ahead and corner roll that up and then latch hook in that other hair. So this is my, you know, I'm kind of, kind of super disappointed tonight about not getting a job that I competed for, for like two months and a whole bunch of time and effort. You know, it was super discouraging to find out. But I did not get that position. So this is my little self-care evening, my little date with myself <laughs> to kind of at least cross off the list of my worries, having to worry about hair flying around in the wind. Let's not complicate life more than it has to be, right? And just at least take care of the things that we can control and let the rest go and try to keep pushing. So also, sorry for these nice gigantic bags under my eyes, but it has been, you know, my face is kind of puffy from crying and everything. Just like gotta cry it out move on, keep pushing. I just worked so hard for that job um, application and six rounds of emails and questions and interviews and stuff that I was sure it was gonna work out this time. I was hopeful at least. I wasn't sure, but I was hopeful. More hopeful than I have been, have allowed myself to be, so. All those people are like, name it and claim it, it's yours. It's like, I don't know. Maybe that works for somebody. For me, I just always try my best and leave the rest and that's all you can do. And if something doesn't work out, just gotta go back to what, what you can control. And so I'm going to just keep focusing on the things that I'm doing with hair, with art and Keep those pursuits moving forward and look for 
constantly I'm looking for opportunities to make an impact and and get back into society, you know, and either the workplace, activism, advocacy, teaching, that kind of thing. But as long as those doors remain closed, then the only thing that's left is stuff that I can build on my own. And I have to build something that is, I have to focus on things, I should say, that provide for my kids in the absence of a job. So. That's kind of what what ends up happening. A lot of people are like, oh, just go start a nonprofit, just do this, just do that. It's like, yeah, you know, it's a, a massive amount of work to start a podcast, start a this. I mean, even my YouTube channel here has been a lot of work, and I want to continue it, but I don't get around to it all the time just because I have to focus on the guaranteed. Uh, bird in the hand type of paid stuff. So if I get a braiding client, I'm going to braid their hair. Nine times out of ten, I'm braiding somebody else's hair and not mine. And every once in a while, I'm doing my own hair and then I can do a tutorial because I don't like to take up other people's time doing tutorials with their hair and them in the chair because, um, you know, it's just, it's just a lot of kind of stress sometimes when people be on camera and have extra time while you're trying to explain what you're doing with their hair and doing it. And a lot of times people just like to have a normal conversation with the hair chair and sometimes it turns into more of like a therapy session for the client, <laughs> you know, talking to your hairdresser. I know a lot of secrets for a lot of people. That's how that works. Your hairdresser usually ends up knowing a lot of, a lot of your business if you trust your stylist so anyways yeah people don't want to say all that on camera so if I'm filming or doing a tutorial while I'm doing hair sometimes it kind of kills the vibe of the it's almost like hair client and hair stylist confidentiality or yeah, it's like attorney client privilege it's kind of like that with, with hair stylists too you just you know, listen and sometimes give advice if asked. And then, yeah, it's just, it's their time. It's their moment to be styled. So anyways, we're gonna just keep proceeding around the this new braid with, so I totally need to talk you through that one. Sorry, I am just going ahead and again, pushing the latch hook through, latching the hair, closing the latch, pulling it through, closing it again, pulling it through the loop. If you've ever done a latch hook rug when you were a kid or any kind of latch hook work in general, you know how to work a latch hook. So it's the same process just with hair and you always want to make sure to be in the center of that loop. You don't want it to be too off to the side. You're going to end up with different lengths going on. So yeah, we're just working our way around. Sometimes you get these little, little pieces that sort of stick to your fingers or something. When you're all done, you can always kind of run your fingers through the hair and pull out whatever little pieces might be loose in there, might be floating. So don't worry about them, they're just annoying because they kind of get in your face while you're working. Other than that, they're pretty harmless little, little fluff sections, little pieces of fluff. So, Keeping on going all the way around and I'm gonna finish this up because the weekends are my busiest time for hair, for hair clients. Everybody books on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> so Friday evening, I can do my little self-care time, have a date with myself, do my own hair, 
I don't do it very often. Probably, what has it been? I left my, those Maverick locks and the Braden ones for six weeks. Left them in only for six weeks. Usually I use my, you know, leave my locks in for longer, but they were just, I have to say that that particular brand of hair, I was not happy with. It was a trial and error type of thing because they were, it was on sale and I wanted to try out the Maverick locks just to see. It was like 40% off, so I thought, why not? Just in case the client asked me about them. And the problem with it was that it shed all these little teeny tiny pieces of hair constantly on your head, on your scalp. So it was very itchy. And anytime you'd like shake your head out, or I shake my head, it was like little teeny tiny, it was like shedding all over. And if, you know, every time I washed them, it was like, just all these little teeny tiny, I don't know what they did is, you know, in terms of cutting the hair, somehow it ended up with all these little pieces being just left floating in the locks because they were just coming out for the whole six weeks. I could never get all of them out. So it was kind of, yeah, it was kind of weird that way. But anyhow, so we are almost done here. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this last little part. So I'm just gonna do this a little faster. So I sped up the video and I'll just talk to you for a second okay. with voiceover. Langston is obviously in the background tonight. So that is just the reality of working at home, DIY stuff at home, all of that good good stuff. So I'm just braiding this last little section, continuing with the vertical strips going back, even if you just end up with two little one inch or one and a half or two inch strips left, um, still make those go back just so that it will look natural at your hairline so you don't have any braids going like across your forehead. You want them to go back as if they are just hair roots. It looks a little more natural when you pull it back that way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do these last little braids. Now with these these three at the top, I am tucking, I, or I tucked, I should say, because I didn't really show it very, very slow motion there, but I really quickly tucked the ends under braids going down. In other words, under like three or four braids, um, kind of going across my head. So tucked them under and then under and then under. So just kind of like making it lay under the braids and then you can leave the end out because it'll just blend in with the rest of the hair. But that way you don't have to, with such short little cornrows, you don't have to latch hook the ends of those cornrows into each other. You're basically going to just um, hide those little, little braid ends underneath of the other braids going down. Now, if I was going to do hair for a client, I would actually be going, um, you know, braiding the, the entire head and then putting latch hooking all the hair in. I don't usually do braid and then latch and then braid and then latch for a client. I only do that when I do my own hair. And the purpose of that, of course, is just because I have to typically work a little bit at a time with my own hair just as a mom with a schedule, do the back, put a hat on, do the, the next section up, and then finally get to the top and finish that up and um, be done. So I'm just latch hooking in the last little bits up on top, and then I am going to be done with this, and I'll show you kind of how I style it or a couple options for styling it. You can leave it down, you can pull it back, you can do half, half up, half, half down, different things, different configurations. You could even leave some of the cornrows back and then latch hook in hair um, halfway back to have like a braids and loose hair type of look. So this is Langston here lurking off in the corner, which is why my mouth is moving. I'm trying to talk to him. But yeah, he's, he's always, Coming around and the longer I work on my hair, the more 
the more needs that he seems to come up with. You know, he needs popsicle after popsicle or whatever it is. He needs me to stop and um, the Wi-Fi has gone out on his tablet five times, I think, just tonight while I was doing my hair. So I don't know. But anyways. Um, okay, so when you're done, you kind of want to shake it out. Decide how you're going to style it. Obviously, you can have some some cool looks with it just down. Um, if you do pull it back, just keep in mind that these little parts are kind of going to be like you could part it in the middle with that one. You could part it on the side. You go one over further and so on and so forth. So you can kind of shape it based on how you want your parts to lay. Okay. So if you wanted to have it kind of asymmetrical, I'm going to actually be pulling mine back. And so I'm probably going to go with this part right here. And again, you can kind of just feel your way through the hair. Is there any loose pieces lingering? And then just kind of with your fingers, finger comb it a little bit down and back. You can do, um, you could do half up, half down as well. I'm just going to pull it back in a ponytail because I just want something really basic right now. And once you do that, <clears throat> use your little hairs around your edges to kind of um, go lay over top of where your where your braids are starting to kind of bring some of that forward. You can even leave some of it out a little bit if you want. Again, just to have it look a little bit more natural. Just kind of think of how it would be if it was just growing out of your head, you know, just regular hair. That's how you want to treat any of your um, added hair. Now, if there's a, a braid that you feel like, okay, the root is a little bit more obvious than what I wanted, you can always take a small amount, like a, a smaller piece of that hair, um, and just kind of add in on the, on the edges, on the perimeter, a small piece will help, will help that edge blend a little better. You can kind of see how that works. So yeah, if you have any, any areas where you want to just add in a little piece, you can do that. And this is the look that I was going for. Something simple. Again, the wind can rip through here and it's not going to destroy my hair and I can have peace of mind. So I like it. It is a one, one B and 27 blend which is why the roots are a little bit darker. Um, and why the ends are kind of lighter. And again, you can just separate little pieces and kind of pull them in. The nice thing about this hair is it does grip. Um, so if you just pull that little piece back, it kind of stays in place. Of course, if it's a windy day, it's not that big a deal if your hair is kind of going everywhere because that's basically just what happens to everybody's hair in the wind, but you just don't want it to <laughs> be blowing a wig off your head or exposing tracks or a whole bunch of stuff up underneath. So this just, you know, is one hair solution and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. I have just a, a tiny little bit of hair left. And other than that, I used up the full amount it had six very, very small looking bundles. Um, and I will put the link or a description or something for the hair 
in my little description of this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're all having an amazing weekend. So here are just a few still photos that I took, just a few pictures after the fact. And I'm, it's at the end of the day, so my makeup isn't very amazing. Just pretty natural look here in the evening on a Friday night. Um, so happy hairdressing. I hope that this video has helped someone out there with doing your own hair at home and saving some money and also um, just having the the option of doing doing your hair in the comfort of your home and, and getting that solution without necessarily having to go out to a salon or um, you know schedule it into your busy week.